Super Draw Methyl Drostenolone. This is another oldie but goodie classic. This has got some amazing history. Super Draw was used way back in the day, even today, known to be used to kickstart steroid cycles for bodybuilders and powerlifters, even some strong men, professional strong men love it. It's a rapid acting drug. It is known to be like a D-ball, but a dry D-ball. Got a few of these drugs out there now. It's classic that it gains lean muscle, theoretically without the excess water weight. Amazing history. Also used by bodybuilders for contest prep at the end of some of their cycles. The history of this drug described back in 1956 by Syntex Pharmaceutical Company. Remember, Syntex brought us Anadrol 50 and Masteron. This drug was never marketed, unlike Anadrol and Masteron, as a medicine. The interesting history is that there was a drug called Roxalon, dimethazine that was actually sold for a very limited time that's actually two molecules of Superdraw combined by what's called an azine bridge and a molecular structure. Absolutely incredible. But the amazing history of this that everyone knows that's in the bro science world is that in 2005, this was sold and marketed in the gray zone supplement world as a pro hormone. This is really, I think, one of the biggest pHs that was initiated and brought to the world. And it was thought to not be a steroid. This was a pro hormone. But now we know that it's actually a steroid. They just blew off the molecular structure. It was never actually marketed to the FDA. So it's kind of hidden and they made it a steroid, called it a pH and a supplement, hung out there in the gray zone for a while. Then at the end of 2005, the Fed caught on and they added it to the banned steroid list. And, and thank you for some of the men I've talked to in this world that give me my, my information. I do appreciate it. They sent a letter to the company called Designer Supplements, LLC. That was really one of the biggest distributors of this. Boy, they made a lot of money, and everyone knows in the underground back that day, some people got arrested. To this day, Super Draw is very sought after still. Chemical structure of this drug, DHT derived structure, very similar to Masteron. Everyone knows this. The only difference is this is an oral steroid, Super Draw, so it's got the alpha. 17 alkylation, classic, makes it a very strong oral steroid. This drug, like Masteron, is not estrogenic. So that's why guys like it. People know that. They like that side effect profile. Lean, thick gains without the estrogen. It's not like a D-ball or an anadrol, but it does produce strength and some size. It's weakly androgenic. Now, when you look at the classic ratios, they look at anabolic, which is very anabolic, and weakly androgenic. But look, I'm telling you, this drug has been out there utilized for 50 years in the streets. It is actually very androgenic. It's amazing that women actually have tried to use this over the years, looking at the theoretical profile that it's weakly androgenic, but it is androgenic. Forget that, that ratio profile. You'll see male pattern balding. You'll see acne. And again, in some women that have tried to use this, they will have the masculinizing features, hair loss, the puffiness, the facial changes, the voice change, and clitoral growth. This is very, very strong as far as shutting down the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis. I've seen it. Men have used it alone and with other steroids, classically testosterone, and you can get very shut down. This is a very powerful drug. It's amazing that if you, if you just look at 
that androgenicity and the fact that it's low, you think, wow, it's not going to really disturb the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis so much. Wow, it's not true. It can be severe. Anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism is definitely a warning for this drug. Despite all of the things you see on paper, I've heard men tell me that they've had severe depression from superdrawal and they've stayed away from it just because of that, or at least if they've used it, they made sure they're using it with testosterone esters. Other side effects. This is an alpha alkylated drug, so of course it's going to be liver toxic, and some men really do love this drug for strength and for powerlifting and strong men, so they stay on it for a long time, and I've seen elevation of transaminases like other oral steroids. I've seen pronounced. I've also seen cholestatic effects where you see the bilirubin go up and I've seen men complain of jaundice. I've seen it myself, but I've heard this from many men that they use this drug different than any other oral steroid and this drug, they became jaundice and they ended up in the hospital. So again, superdrawal, this is a very toxic drug. Cardiac toxicities, all the same. This is gonna tank and affect the HDL poorly. Interesting, no water retention classically is a sole agent, but it can cause hypertension via vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction, increase the blood pressure. Again, it can cause LVH, steroids. I see it just the other day, another man who's actually not used much steroids, but he was prone to it. His ejection fraction is down. He has a little bit of heart failure, early heart failure, diastolic dysfunction, and of course he has left ventricular hypertrophy. Please, if you're not willing to suffer the consequences of some of these effects, you don't want to be using steroids and you should not be using steroids. Some of these men obviously do a little bit, a little bit, cross this line, cross this line. Keep doing a cycle, I'll be okay. I check my labs, everything's great, and all of a sudden they're tired after 10, maybe 20 years of on and off. I don't do that much steroids, doc, not like the pros. Why is my heart affected? Getting older, people get damaged anyway. If you add steroids into the mix, depending on so many other variables, you really, really can get hurt. So that's the end of this super draw. Pretty short and sweet. I really hope this helps everyone in the world, especially the caregivers and the healthcare providers that I'm trying to now reach out to, to teach them and show them these are the agents. And these are the chemical properties. These are the clinical effects you're going to see.